what kind of bottom did you reach that made you want to change? So on my 28th birthday, I took about 35 Molly. And it was uh, when I, like, I was, I didn't take like 35 in my hand. You know, it was like I took 15 in over six hours. And then like for the next two or three days, I was just popping one or two to like maintain and obviously doing other shit with it. But um, when I went to sleep and woke up, I thought I had done like permanent damage. And by the way, like living in Vegas, doing all this stuff, I had built up a tolerance. So mm. it wasn't like, I don't do Molly, now I'm doing 35. It was yeah. like my normal night was anywhere from 10 to 15. And I was taking, you know, 15 Percocets uh, a day. Ooh. I was on Xanax for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years every single Dude, day. that's hard to get off. See, I and that's the thing. People talk about opiates, and I'm like, really? Because to Benzos. me, yeah. those Xanax were the yeah. only thing where I was like, I needed, I needed help. Like I needed to go. Oh, yeah. get you'll help have a seizure. Time. You'll you'll seize. And yeah, you'll, yeah. And you'll climb the walls. It's some of the wildest withdrawals I've seen have been from Xanax. Poof. Yeah. It was. I think about it now, and I'm like, like I would rather be. I'd rather wake up tomorrow addicted to everything I've ever been addicted Except to that than one. just or or, well, if, or just benzo. The real problem with the benzo for you is not that withdrawal, is that the two, the Percocet and the Xanax together, is a fatal combination. And doctors prescribe them together all the freaking time. And yeah. those two are what make you stop breathing. It's what yeah. killed Prince, everybody. They all die of the same thing. Benzo, opiate. It's and hard I took to, them every day for seven hard years. Hard to die of an opiate by itself. Hard to die of a benzo by itself. Really easy to die of both of them together. Really yeah, easy. Yeah. So you're very lucky. And so what did you think you had done? What led you to believe you had damaged yourself? Uh, like how I felt was, you know, when you see like a puppy who was taken in from like a shelter and he's like in the corner shivering yes. and the, like, that's how I was. It was like, I could like loud noises. If I heard someone in the hall, like I was everything. It was just my body felt cold, but yeah, all, like it was just really Wild. bad. It was. Were you having any... Um, like when people get to that state from uh, ecstasy, sometimes they'll just like stop speaking and stuff. They have trouble communicating. They yeah, I was living in my head yeah, for yeah. sure, where it was yeah. just like, man, this is really fun. And like, yeah. you know, cut to five days later, it was my birthday and uh, I was seeing a girl at the time and she arranged like a dinner for me. And I was like, I, I'm laying in the back of the car. I'm like, I can't eat. Mm. I can't do anything. I just feel, but it wasn't that that happened and then I was like, I'm done. I had gotten, like, that was kind of one of those nights where I was like, this is going to be like one of my last hurrahs. Like, I was like, I want to be. So now I got to get with it. Get it really going. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as that happened, I was like, yo, oh, fuck this. Like, I was like, I'm just, I'm, afterwards, I was like, I'm um, done. Yeah. Like, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, addiction is, is I'm, I hope people understand that it gets funny in, in the disease. And, and, oh, and totally. when you go to meetings, people tell the stories, they laugh. You know, it's one of the things <laughs> I like about recovery and addiction. It's just so funny. It's not funny when the person's in it in that moment. Yeah, but it's yeah. funny when you reminisce about it and think, oh my God, how it's crazy. It's a certain kind of crazy. And it's a funny kind of crazy. Yeah. So I'm glad you're sober. It's good. Congratulations. Yeah, thank That's you. good. It's hard work. 